Hello, you excited Zerglings. Today I'll be talking about a Malzahar rework concept, and I'll be trying my absolute best to not screw this intro up for the fifth time. God damn it. Anyway, so my thought, uh, my goal was to create a fun uh, and modern look into Malzahar's extremely boring kid. Now, I my focus was not for balancing. I did try to balance as best as I can, of course, this numbers is always up to adjustment, but when it comes to the core ideas, which is what I value more than anything else, and is honestly extremely hard to balance correctly, especially with such an easy to play uh, kit, which I did try to make a bit more complicated, but for the most part, it's very hard without completely changing his playstyle, which I am not good at. Uh, I'm just not good at doing stuff like this. I am very good at taking something that already exists and balancing it or making it fun, but not in making something new. That's not really something that I'm good at. So, <laughs> uh, um, let's start with the passive. Um, the passive and, okay, so every time you hit a champion with an ability or an attack or a basic attack, you deal um, a dot that stacks every time you hit it with a new attack. But instead of doing bonus damage, for example, if the base is like five dot damage over time, and then you like hit it basic attack into a Q, uh, instead of giving it uh, another 5 damage over time making it 10 the damage multiplies if you're using a new attack uh, not if that, that's the way it works it cannot be stacked with the same attack twice this is really important because the E and the ult I don't want them to stack multiple times so that's uh, just it so every time you hit it with a new attack it multiplies so it starts 5 into uh, 10 20 and 30 and 40 the W is not, doesn't deal damage, so the only actual stacks you get is Q, E, auto attack, and ult. But it gets to a really ramping up damage over time attack. Um, okay, so the Q is the same, I did not change it, I like it just the way it is. Um, the only, only change that it has is actually a new interaction with a new ultimate. And I'll explain that when I get to the ultimate because that makes way more sense. The W is um, uh, a ne nether shield or a void shield. I, I like the void shield. It's basically the passive, but instead of just giving you a free t shield that you don't have to think about, uh, it's an active. You click it, it gives you um, uh, like a magic damage shield that also makes you obviously... Uh, unable to be CC'd by the next CC. It's either either, right? It's either you get CC'd and it completely absorbs the shield, or you get damage and it goes into the shield, right? Um, this, this is still a bit overpowered and it might need to be changed that like if you take magic damage, then it like no longer has a CC. So it's like whatever happens first, you take magic damage or CC. I don't like that approach. Um, but yeah, if you take CC, then it breaks the shield. That's um, and also uh, activating it deals damage to you and costs a lot of mana. The reason is because I just wanted to incentivize like using it correctly. Like you see, um, I just you know I don't want it to be like um what's his name Nocturne's uh, W. You just press it and that's it, right? It just it's there. It's either you get popped or not. I want it to be a, bit, a little bit more thought into it. You know that the damage is approaching its physical damage, then by dealing damage to yourself, then you're actually taking more damage. But if it's a magic damage that you see coming, then you can activate it and then you reduce the damage. So there's a little bit more uh, skill to this. A little bit more. Not, not a lot, but just a little bit. And the same with CC, obviously. You have to judge beforehand. Is it worth losing with the health and mana for the CC? Or am I going to actually lose health, less health? Depends on the matchup, obviously. If like a massive tank is coming and he's not a damage dealer, then sometimes it's not worth activating the shield. Uh, the next is the E, which I've made a lot of changes to. So, 
Uh, okay, so you activate it, it's just the same. It puts uh, damage over time onto a minion and it acts the same. It gives you mana when the minion dies and goes on to the next minion. Now, here's the big changes. First of all, um, the um, whenever it kills a minion, it ramps up in stacks. The stacks will not deal bonus damage to minions, but will be impactful when uh, if it's on a champion. I'll explain that. Okay, so um, the prioritization is changed right now. It prioritizes. Uh, it tries to prioritize minions. I have noticed a lot of times, but right now the way it's going to change is that the prioritization is going to be first of all low health minions. Uh, the threshold needs to be balanced. Uh, I'm thinking if it's 25% or less, then that will be the first prioritization. Then uh, second prioritization is enemies. Uh, well, first of all, try to go to a minion and then onto an enemy. Uh, once again, this might needs to be changed. Uh, Give me a second. Uh, okay, so uh, a lot of stuff like this needs to be like a bit, a little bit more figured out. So, um, and okay, so if it hits an enemy hero, now here is the big change. If it hits an enemy hero, it instead of just dealing a DOT, it deals an AOE DOT. Okay, so in, instead of just dealing a DOT on the champion, it deals an AOE DOT, which scales with your passive plus the stacks that you got from killing minions. The reason it's both is just so you have something to do in team fights that isn't going to like ruin your laning phase. So in laning phase you could use minions, but in team fights you could use your stacks that you gained from your passive, right? Uh, this might need this might need this might be a bit too overpowered. Uh, and if it is, which I very much think it's it is going to be overpowered as well. Um what it maybe what it can be is that the DOT stacks better. Ah, uh, I'm not sure. Once again, this is something that because if you're just like a single champion with your combo, then it stacks a lot of the stacks. So maybe a little bit of changes needs to happen to this. Um, right, so the, uh, let's get to, to the actual area of effect. Um, the area of effect deals damage, as I said, by scaling with the stacks and your passive. So if the champion is uh, stacked with your passive or enemy champions around are stacked with a passive, like let's say, for example, you hit your E into a champion that you haven't stacked passive on yet, but like a champion next to him has multiple stacks of passive onto him, then he's going to take bonus damage to the champion around, not the main target that has the E on him, but the enemy that is uh, uh, near him will take bonus damage. So. Uh, that might be the balancing that it needs, so it's actually less uh, damage onto the main target based on your passive, but more uh, onto enemy champions around it. So it's good in team fights, but not overpowered in a 1v1 scenario. Once again, this is stuff that needs to be figured out a little more. Uh, if a champion is hit with multiple stacks, uh, with multiple, like, a long period of the dot, of the AOE dot, then he also gets the E applied onto him. Now, the amount that needs does scale with a passive. Once again, this is just to make team fights better. And a lot of these are straight up buffs, but once you see what I do to the ult, you'll understand why this is needed. Because I massacred the ult into oblivion. <laughs> Pun definitely intended. Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, so, if a champion is near, once again, the E. And he has like three stacks of the passive, but another champion has like one stack or no stacks. Then the champion with three stacks would get the DOT on him after like two seconds or a consecutive 1.5 seconds of standing in it. But remember, the, the DOT does not, the AoE DOT does not apply passive. Only the main target applies. It only applies to the, to the main target. Uh, but then, like, the champion with, like, one stack would uh, get the um, E on to him after, like, three seconds of consecutive hit, okay? So, you kind of want to use your E when enemies are clumped up into each other. And, um, obviously, it's going to be really good. So, the ult, okay, uh, the way that ult works is he picks a spot, 
uh, like an AOE target. And he starts channeling the beam into that area. It creates a slowing zone that expands rapidly. So it starts really small and then expands, expands, and then the, the, the longer it expands, the faster it expands. That's what I mean by rapidly. And enemies inside it are slowed for like 35% or 40%. Once again, numbers are up to balancing. And if you are inside of it for uh, one second or maybe longer, once again, depends on balancing, then you are rooted for 1.5 seconds. The zone also deals damage based on max health. Uh, so it's just like the ult zone the, that is created right now. When you ult someone, I think I'm going to use it soon. I know. But you can see the footage, you can see that I've used it multiple times, so you understand what I mean. Uh, and the interaction is that, uh, the, so the Q interaction, so uh, enemies champions who uh, have the Q silence on them and are taking damage from the ultim would have the silence duration increased. The, the reason to, for this is for it to be like a pseudo stun, because it roots them plus silences them. Uh, it's it's a pseudo stun, uh, but it does require all the abilities to be used, like both abilities to be used. So, it's not just a straight up stun, and it takes like one second for someone to get through it. So, you're gonna have to combo this. Now, here's the thing that I'm actually not sure about because right now Malzar is kind of healthy in pro play, and I wanna emphasize that that he is actually healthy for pro play because champions like Akali and high mobility champions who are really really hard to lock down can be locked down by him now a twisted fate does the same thing but better then um that's kind of the problem but i wanted to make him fun i know this is not going to be a balance a good thing for balancing uh, a lot of people mistake that a, an overpowered champion and a toxic champion for meta two different things for example vayne is a toxic champion for the meta so is caitlin because whenever Caitlyn is viable, then bot lane becomes a very early game bully, um, have to 2v2 early on, because she's just so good at it that you are going to have to do it or else you're going to fall behind. They're toxic champions to the meta. Unlike, for example, um, Aphelios, which in my opinion is kind of a healthy champion for the meta. or Well, not healthy, but he doesn't harm the meta. When he's viable, it's because the meta is already uh, late game oriented and in that he does his job very well and doesn't ruin the meta for other champions and you can still play anything obviously the problem is the meta not the Felios. he doesn't influence the meta in a bad way there are champions that influence the meta in a good way for example uh, Aatrox uh, incentivizes incentivizes <laughs> Uh, non-range top laners, which everyone hates. There is not one person that likes range top laners. Like, <laughs> I doubt that even players that play range top laners, I play range top laners, I don't like to range top laners. <laughs> used to, actually. It doesn't matter. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, because Aatrox is very good at countering these uh, Vayne picks, these Quinn picks, which no one likes. So he's actually healthy for the meta, kind of. Obviously, he's toxic in other areas. Um, so, yeah, that, I know that this is a nightmare. Uh, like, this is not a good thing for balancing. And I am aware that uh, I'm changing a lot of the way that his passive works. And I'm kind of removing the Pokemon Master, which I really, really, really tried to keep in. But it just didn't fit. It didn't fit the style that I was going for. And I didn't think that it would work well. Um, I'm n I'm not too sure about this rework. So, once again, any uh, suggestions that you have, or anything that you think could have been better, uh, I'd love to hear it. Obviously, uh, if you were like, "Wait, the W is kind of dumb. Uh, make it this and this and this," or not make it. Obviously, I'm not in charge of Riot, but like, uh, this suggestion would work better with your um concept and I'll be like ah oh, that's nice maybe you're right and <laughs> so
sorry, my. Um. So yeah, that's that's it. That's all I got. Uh, the game is gonna go on. Um, we win this. Uh, uh obviously, I get an A. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's my uh, rework concept. If it didn't make any sense, um, let me right now put some uh, uh, like detailed explanations of the way that his abilities are going to work, and I'll try to write it as best as I can. Hopefully, uh, that makes sense because uh, I was looking back at my Rise video. Wait, I didn't make a Rise video. I made a Twitch video. Sorry, and I was like, wait, it's actually a bit. Um, hard to, <laughs> sorry, just, uh, it's a little bit like hard to fully uh, understand all of it when it's not side by side all of the abilities. So I'll put all of them on screen. Um, so yeah, um, that's it. That's all I got. Um,